Hi, I'm Linda. This is Desi. And I'm Troy, and we're at Wines, Pines, and Canines. Today we're headed up to Shenandoah National Park, and we're going to do the second side of our battery tests. Yes, we have brought along our Renogy Solar Suitcase, so we're going to go ahead and hook that up, see how much longer we can get out of the battery this time. And unlike last time, we do not have electric hookup as a backup. So um, if you'd like to see how long this battery lasts, please stick around. <laughs> Okay, so if you watched our first video on boondocking, you know we like to do a little time travel. So we're doing that again today. Our trip is over, so we're going to be giving you our thoughts on uh, how everything progressed as well. Now, um, during the year, as we move along, we're going to be doing a lot more videos on, you know, finding boondocking opportunities, the batteries, the solar, looking at things like the propane usage, um, our tank usage, all of those items. So if you'd like to see those during the year, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, Desi here always wants you to hit that notification bell. So a big thank you to everyone and all the comments that watched our last video. We really appreciate all your input about your batteries and your setups. Yes, and that is the way we learn as a community is by sharing. So thank you for all the great um, suggestions, yeah. your experiences, your setups, and we are taking them all into account as we move forward. So in today's video, we're gonna be staying in Shenandoah National Park, and it's a dry campground. So we're not gonna have any services at our campsite. We're gonna have to be 100% reliant on our batteries and our solar to keep us energized. For those of you who may not have seen the first video, we have a 65 amp hour 12 volt basic battery in our camper which only gives us 32 amp hours to utilize so while this is a fairly basic battery we find that it's very similar to what a lot of dealers are putting in so we wanted to do these experiments to see how far we could go so in today's video we're going to add that renogy side solar uh, suitcase we are going to tell you a rookie mistake that we made with our fresh water tanks and then we're gonna talk about our conclusions on our battery setups and talk about going forward. Camp Big Meadows Campground is a nice park, but it's a first come, first served RV park located up on Skyline Drive. Because we hadn't been there before, we also wanted to hedge our bets on getting the best spot available. To do that, we stayed the night before in nearby Crozet, Virginia, at a place called Misty Mountain. It takes about an hour and a half to get to the campground and it really made selection a lot easier. And we really enjoyed our evening in Crozet. Um, we started out with taking a trip to the Carter Family Orchard, which is um, just outside of Charlottesville. It's kind of up on a hill. It has incredible views and it has those apple cider yeah. donuts, which um, bought a six pack. Um, oh. Kind of glad we didn't buy a 12 pack. <laughs> Um, but it is no longer pet friendly. They are very um, uh, particular about that. So Troy and Desi did have to stay in the car while mm. I did a little bit of shopping. But then we finished up the evening at Crozet Pizza and that was incredible as well. So we really enjoyed our one evening there. It was very nice. Now we got up the next morning and made our way up to Big Meadows Campground. This location is about equidistant from either end of Skyline Drive. It's about an hour and a half from virtually anywhere. <laughs> As it turns out, it's got almost no self coverage whatsoever and absolutely no internet. All right, so let's do some time travel again and let's go back in time to our first day on the Shenandoah. Today we find ourselves in Shenandoah National Park on Skyline Drive at the Big Meadows Campground. We're pretty excited. It's a beautiful location to camp, and for us, it's kind of a new thing. It's, it's an unimproved campground, so we don't have any services at the campsite. We do have potable water on site. We just have to do it in uh, predetermined locations, and we do have a dump station by the entrance. Yes. Now, um, this is where we're going to be doing the second test on our battery. So if you watched our first video on us testing our battery, you know that we had some trouble when it was cloudy days or when that sun started to go down. So this time we've brought along our Renogy solar suitcase and we are plugging that in in the hopes to keep that battery topped off longer. So 
We will circle back to you guys soon to let you know how it worked. But first, we're going for a hike. You know, boondocking is more than monitoring your electric. Uh, boondocking involves monitoring your holding tanks, gray and black, but most importantly at this very moment, fresh. Because when I backed the trailer in here and got disconnected, I forgot to fill the storage tank up before I got here. Now I'm having to go to a location here in the campground and fill up these gallon water jugs a couple times because I don't feel like disconnecting and towing to do it. Lesson learned. Hey, we're up on the uh, Skyline Drive in Shenandoah National Park this evening. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. Linda's determined that she's going to find some bear. <laughs> so we're out running around, see if we can't make that happen. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get to see a bear, but I'm fairly certain we'll at least get to see some deer. And yeah. um, these views are absolutely beautiful as the sun is setting. So um, we also wanted to give you a quick update on the battery. Mm -hmm. uh, we left around 630 yep. and the battery was at 87%. So I think it is an improvement with that side solar panel. It is an improvement. And we did use a little bit of water pump cleaning up from kitchen and dishes and things. So we put a pretty good draw on it. I yeah. think it'll bounce back before dark 30. Yeah, um, so, so far we're, um, we, we think we're in a better spot than we were um, the last trip that we took out. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you some views and um, we'll be back and check in later. Okay, so we got back from our Skyline Drive drive uh, around nine o'clock, watch the sun go down. And I do want to say, if you go to this area and you are on the road at night, you are going to see deer. And yeah. they don't care that you're on the road. They don't get out of the road. They expect you to move. So um, just be really careful driving because they are around every corner. But when we got back, our battery was around 83%. Now for reference, I went back, looked at our previous video, and normally our battery was around um, high 60s, mm -hmm. low 70s at this point. So it is much better. Um, now this time we did not run the TV for an hour and we weren't there for a couple hours, but we were running the water pump a lot more during the day. So um, I think we had a little battery usage, but we're talking you know, 13 to 15%. So I do think that side panel helped a little. Now let's go back in time a little bit to the first morning we were there. Uh, as a point of reference, on our first trip in the morning, we had a battery level of 53%. Hey, good morning. We got up just a few moments ago. The battery's at like 79%. Um, we've got some water on for coffee and we're trying to get our morning started. Uh, the battery held up pretty good. The sun's coming up, so I expect the battery to recharge pretty quickly throughout the day. So far, one of the biggest hurdles to our boondocking has been the inability to use our curry coffee maker. Because our last trip was kind of spur of the moment, I had to run down to my local Walmart, and for $15, I purchased this French press made by Bodum. We didn't, and we really like it a lot. And we are all packed up and we are headed over to Front Royal, Virginia this morning. We're going to see the northern end of the Shenandoah um, uh, National Park Skyline Drive. Uh, battery did fine overnight, as I mentioned. Uh, it really did pretty well. Linda even turned the inverter on for a little while, ran the hair dryer, put a little bit of pre pressure on it. Um, it's already back up to about 70%. And given that the sun's getting high, I suspect by the time we get back, it ought to be fully uh, charged up to 100%. I'll probably run a uh, side solar suitcase this afternoon to top it off as much as possible uh, for this evening. 
Yeah, and the hair dryer, no, I did just run it on low for about five minutes. So, um, but it it handled it. But so far, um, everything looks to be going fine. So I think our first 24 hours, we are good to go. And I don't see a problem with the uh, next 24 hours. So we will check back in later. We are back from our drive on Skyline Drive here in Shenandoah. Uh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon right now. We got back about an hour, hour and a half ago. We've had lunch. Um, when we left this morning, our battery was around 79%. When we got back, it was around 90%. We went ahead um, and hooked up that side solar panel. And at this point, between the one on the roof and that side solar panel, they're bringing in about seven amps. The battery is staying charged and we have been running the lights, the bathroom vent fan, putting the awning out, the water pump. So at the moment, that side solar panel and that rooftop panel are pretty much keeping this battery topped off. So I thought the battery did real well. We have 100 watts on the roof, the Renogy solar suitcase is 100 watts outside. Working in tandem, I thought the battery did a good job. And especially considering for about five minutes you ran a 1000 watt hair dryer with the inverter. Yes, um, uh, I was wondering how it would do, but I was uh, surprised that even though it went down into the 60s, it recovered uh, fairly quickly. And by mm. the time we got home midday, that thing was uh, almost fully charged back up with the um, full sun. Now with the tanks, obviously with my rookie mistake, I won't be able to test that completely. <laughs> yeah, now we will show that in an upcoming video a little bit more in depth. But for now, let's see how that battery performed the rest of the evening. Just got back from dinner at the Big Meadows Lodge uh, where we watched the sun go down. So it is now about nine o'clock and where is our battery at? Well, we got home about 30 minutes ago. We ran the water pump, a couple lights, and we are charging a cell phone, and we are down to about 84%. But this battery has stayed pretty much topped off all day, thanks to the rooftop solar and that side solar panel. It is doing much better than our first test um, about a month ago. So, very happy so far with the results on this side panel. We'll have no problem getting through uh, this evening and overnight but tomorrow may be a different story. When we made our reservation, we were going to have two really sunny days and one partly sunny day. And now that partly sunny day has turned into overcast with potential for some rain. So if that happens, we know that there is no way this battery is going to last based on previous tests. So if we get up in the morning and that forecast has held, we are probably gonna to have to hitch up and head home. So we'll see how it goes in the morning, but this is the life of one 12 volt, 65 amp hour battery. It just doesn't have the capacity to really last through those kinds of days. All right, so the weather did not work out. We decided to pull stakes and head to the house. Um, it's a beautiful day for travel, but it's overcast and rainy, so we're gonna head our way back to North Carolina. Well, it was disappointing having to leave the camp that day, but with no real solar, we were gonna have an issue. Yeah, we waited till around 11 o'clock, um, but the weather did not clear, so we went ahead and packed it up. And I think the battery was in the high 60s at yeah. that point, so I think we made the right decision. Right. And for me, I was more encouraged to see how the solar suitcase was going to work and work for us. Uh, a couple things that does really well, it's easy to set up. It's easy to use. And, you know, as the sun moves around your campsite, you can redirect a solar panel to follow that. And most importantly to me, it did exactly what I hoped it would. It kept the battery in the camp recharged to a higher degree later in the day. 
Yes, but you know, there were some downsides. Um, it does weigh about 30 pounds with the extension cable, so you have to think about that. And um, you have to think about how you're gonna secure it. So mm -hmm. if you leave your campsite, you know, are you gonna leave it um, just kind of out in the open, hope that no one takes it? Um, you may have to pack it up and put it back in the camper, therefore it's not yeah. getting the solar. Or um, I think for us, we're gonna look at some type of um, chain to maybe secure it. So right. it's just something to think about. But even those two things, uh, we are definitely keeping this Renogy panel. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, well, that brings us to what is the verdict of the battery? You know, one of the things about a 65 amp hour battery is it doesn't have a lot of storage. You can add all the solar you want, but if the battery isn't large enough, you're just not going to be able to make it through on some of these non-optimal days. Exactly. And our conclusion is, it is time for old Cece to go on down the road. Maybe asking yourself, who is Cece? Cece is a term referred to in the industry as core charge. When you buy a battery or you replace batteries, they generally want you to bring the old worn out battery in to turn it in. Exactly, or they ding you $20, $25. 20 or $30, dollars. yeah. So, so old Cece is going on down the road, but we're thinking of some ways to send her off in style and we're also going to have an additional new battery setup. So right. if you're interested in seeing those, remember... Like and subscribe. And Desi here always wants you to hit that notification bell. Um, other times, if we were only going to be gone a short time, we just kind of left it out and hope no one <laughs> stealed it. Probably be all right. Stealed it. <laughs> Bird! <laughs> Oh, now you're like taunting me up there. Wait, grab my phone. I want to take a picture of it because I want to put it in the video of we're sorry, but this bird was like losing its mind.